How do you know if your pool lift will meet the new ADA requirements for swimming pool accessibility? It can be hard to tell when the requirements are boiled down into marketing terms such as ADA approved, verified ADA compliant, and ADA certified. If you're confused about what constitutes ADA compliance, don't worry. In reality, compliance is pretty simple. Think of compliance as a basic equation. C compliance equals P plus I. P represents the product and the design specific requirements set forth by the ADA. I represents the ADA's installation requirements. All P and I requirements need to be met in order for your lift installation to be ADA compliant. Let's look at these requirements a little closer. First, there are the product or P requirements. The seat must be a minimum of 16 inches wide. The seat surface must be between 16 inches and 19 inches from the deck surface. Footrests are required and must move with the seat. Armrests are not required, but if used, the armrest opposite the water must be removed or fold clear of the seat. User controls must allow for unassisted operation from both the deck and water levels. The seat surface must be able to be submerged a minimum of 18 inches below the water line. And the lift must be able to lift 300 pounds. All of these items are required in order to conform to the ADA product design guidelines. But remember, product conformance is only half the equation. The other half of the equation is I, which represents the installation elements required by ADA. These installation requirements have two parts. First is a scoping requirement that defines a pool's means of access requirements. Pools with less than 300 linear feet of pool wall are required to provide one means of access, and that means can be either a pool lift or a ramp. Larger pools more than 300 linear feet are required to provide two means of access. Second are the application requirements, which define placement and accessibility. These requirements are a major predictor of compliance and an area that is often overlooked. Because each pool is unique, close attention must be paid to placement in order to ensure the product's accessibility. In this area, ADA states that pool lifts shall be located where the water level does not exceed 48 inches. In the raised position, the center line of the seat shall be located over the deck and a minimum of 16 inches back from the pool's edge. Additionally, clear deck space shall be provided parallel with the seat. This clear space starts at the rear edge of the seat opposite the pool and extends back 12 inches, out 36 inches, and forward 48 inches. Now that we understand both elements of our equation, let's take a look at a few real-world scenarios and solve for C to see if we're compliant. Pool lift A has an arm reach of 30 inches. The site has a deck to water level of 15 inches. Can you reach the required submerged depth of 18 inches with pool lift A? If you said no, you're correct. The combination of the deck to water level and the seat depth requirement exceed pool lift A's reach. In short, the arms are too short. In this particular instance, an alternative model or brand should be used that provides a reach of at least 33 inches. This is one example of how site variability can affect compliance. Here's another. Your customer has a pool with less than 300 linear feet of pool wall and requires one means of access. So you choose your favorite brand of lift, identify an area of the pool where the water depth does not exceed 48 inches, and carefully place your lift 16 inches back from the pool's edge to meet the seat centerline requirement. At this point, everything looks good. Next, you check the clear deck space area and discover that a portion of the lift encroaches into this space. What's your next step? If you chose to stop, you're correct. In this particular instance, you should seek an alternative model or brand that meets the ADA installation requirements. The clear deck space requirement is designed to provide an area of unobstructed space starting at the back corner of the seat opposite the pool. This requirement is in place to ensure that the users have an open area next to the lift where they can parallel park their chair when transferring onto the lift.
Additionally, this space is important if a user requires transfer assistance. As you can see, the installation requirements can have an adverse impact on compliance even when you use a product that conforms to the ADA product guidelines. Remember, both the product and installation requirements must be met in order to be compliant. And lastly, as you're introducing the new ADA requirements to your existing customer, he interrupts you and states that they are already ADA compliant because they have a manual lift at their pool. What's your response? If you inform your customer that a manual lift does not meet the ADA's unassisted operation requirement, then you did the right thing. Manual lifts require staff to operate, so they do not meet this requirement. Also, most older manual style lifts use a sling seating system, which does not meet the footrest requirement. Additionally, newer style lifts offer armrests, firm seats, and back and leg support, which help better accommodate people with a wide range of disabilities. To sum up, ADA compliance is a function of a conforming product design that is installed in accordance with the ADA installation requirements. To ensure that your lift meets all ADA requirements, number one, make sure your product of choice conforms to the ADA product design guidelines. Pool lift manufacturers should be able to produce independent testing results that verify conformance. Number two, confirm with your installation provider that when installed, your lift will meet the ADA installation requirements. For more information on ADA compliance, visit www.ada.gov or www.poollifts.com.